Okay, now we're going to be moving to Chapter 8, Lesson 3, Connect Fraction to Divisions. Um, before we begin this lesson, I'm going to show you some really neat things and concepts about fractions and division. Let's take the number 3 fourths. 3 is our numerator, 4 is the denominator. When we think of 3 fourths, we know that this, is going to, this number is going to be less than 1, because 4 is if you were to have the whole thing, and you have less than that. So you have less than one whole. When you're thinking of three over four, you could think of it as a division problem. Three divided by four. Three over four, here's your numerator, and here's your denominator, is the same as three divided by four. The numerator goes first, and the denominator goes second. Okay, this is the total that you have and this is the amount of parts that you're um, splitting it into. So keep in mind, this is your dividend for the total. You have three of something, and this is your divisor, the amount of groups that you're breaking it into. When we're putting it inside the house and we're trying to solve this problem, then the three goes inside the house, and the four goes outside. And if you try to solve that, you'll know that 4, buddy, times what number gets close to or equal to 3 without going over? It's 0. 4 times 0 is 0. 3. And then you can add your decimal, which you shoot straight up. 3 decimal 0 is the same as 3. Because we have that decimal 0 there that we shoot straight up. 4 times what number gets close to or equal to 30? 4 times 7 is 28. 2. You could add another 0. 3 decimal zero, 0 is the same as 3. And it's not that the zeros don't have a value, it's that after the 0, it's tenths, 0 tenths, and 0 hundredths. 4 times 5 is 20. Now you have no leftovers. And so your answer for 3 over 4, 3 divided by 4, is 0 and 75 hundredths, which you could see is less than 1. When we're looking at a fraction, the numerator is the first number, the denominator is the second number. The first number is the one that's going to go inside the house. That's how much we have. So let's look at one more fraction before we start the new problem. Let's try 8 over 4. If we do 8 over 4, we know that the numerator is bigger than the denominator, so our answer is going to be larger than 1. And we don't know how much by, but keep in mind, the numerator goes first, 8 divided by 4. Numerator, denominator, numerator, denominator. The first number, it's not the bigger number, it's not the smaller number, it's our dividend. It's how much we have. It goes inside the house, 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And here you can see our answer is 2 whole. And think about it. 8 over 4 is the same as 2. 8 divided by 4 is the same as 2. Now, we're going to go move on to our new lesson, which is connect fractions to division. Now, what I don't like about this lesson is that they kind of give you the equation already for each of them. One thing I want you to notice is sometimes the numerator is larger, I mean the first number is larger than the second number. Sometimes the first number is smaller than the second number. So here 8 is bigger than 6, here 7 is less than 10. So when you look at these numbers 6 and 8, I don't want you to think, oh it has to be 6 over 8, or oh it has to be 8 over 6. I want you to actually think about what what is your dividend, what is your total, what are you breaking apart? And the other thing I want you to do is to challenge yourself. Even though they give you the division problem already, I kind of want you to cover it up like I'm doing right now. Because I know they always do number one and give the answer. But number two, if you look here, they're kind of giving the answer here by giving you the equation. What I want you to do is I want you to use your brain for a sec and cover that up. And without them giving you clues, see what is going to be our division and fraction problems. 
So, it's a word problem. What did we do last lesson in 8-2 when there was a word problem? We did part, part, whole. Which, even though we're moving to Common Core and Go Math, we saw and used ever since Envision, um, at the very least at first grade, and I'd assume in kindergarten as well. Let's read it. Six students share eight apples equally. How many apples does each student get? Okay, first I'm gonna change the six to a number, so I know that I'm gonna use the number six and eight. Now we have six students, and we have eight apples. What are we doing? We are sharing the eight apples with the six students, and we're finding out how many apples each student will get. Our dividend is our total. It is what we are dividing up. Are we dividing students up? No, because if we're to split students up, we don't want to be disembodying them where we're going to split a leg with an arm and so forth. So our dividend, our total, our top number will not be the six students. We're dividing up the eight apples. So since we're dividing the apples and we have eight total, what we're dividing, our dividend, goes on top. We're dividing eight apples. It would not make sense to put six students up here because this is what we're splitting apart and we would not split apart people. But what does the six tell us? When we know the total already, then that six is going to either tell us that six is going to go inside here or there's going to be six boxes. If we put six inside this box, then we're saying that one person is getting six apples. Is one person getting six apples? No. So what is that box? That one box means one student. The second box means the second student. The third box means the third student. The fourth box means the fourth student. The fifth box means the fifth student. And the sixth box means the sixth student. Do you know how much apples that first person got? How many apples? No, you do not. That's your X. Do you know how many apples the second student got? No, but it's the same amount, so we're going to put the same letter, X. Do you know how many the third person got? No, but it's going to be the same amount, X, 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 X. Let's review. The top number is what we're splitting apart, and we're not splitting apart the students. We're splitting apart the apples, so we're going to put apples, and there are eight apples total. So eight apples goes on top. Underneath, if we put six inside, then we're saying that one person gets six, and that doesn't make sense. So it's one box, one student, second box, second student, and so forth. Now we could do our equation. This looks just like it did yesterday, where we knew that it's eight, the, the dividend is eight, and we're dividing by six. What this lesson wants us to focus on is changing that 8 divided by 6 into a fraction. So our first one is our numerator. Our second one is our denominator. So it's going to be 8 over 6. And what is 8 over 6? Well, if the numerator is bigger than the denominator, then everyone is going to get more than one. And think about it, if we have eight apples and we're giving to six people, everyone's going to be able to get one apple, and then you have two left over. Do you want to just waste those two apples? No, you're going to get a knife and you're going to cut it up. So when we divide, the first number goes inside the house, the second number goes outside, and six goes into eight one time. Six times one is six, and there's two left over. What do we do? This becomes our numerator, and this is our denominator. So everyone gets one and two sixths of an apple. Can we reduce that? Yes. We'll take that one and two sixths, and we ask ourselves, um, what number can go into the top and bottom? The number two, the number two. So when we reduce it, it's two divided by two is one, six divided by two is three. And finally, we have one and one-third apples. Therefore, everyone is getting one whole apple. Then we're going to take the knife and we're going to cut a third of an apple for everyone else. 
So, even though they give us the 8 divided by 6, I want you to cover it up. I want you to draw the picture, write out the equation, convert it to a fraction that you're going to simplify. Let's try the next one. Like I said, even though they give it to us, let's cover it up and see if we can figure it out on our own. So, yes, they gave us the division problem. Cover it. Try not to look at it. Ten boys share seven cereal bars equally. What fraction of a cereal bar does each boy get? So, part, part, whole. What we are dividing goes on top. What we have total. All together, are we talking about the 10 boys? Are we splitting the 10 boys up or the seven cereal bars? What are we breaking into smaller pieces? Like I said, we don't want to break people apart, so it'll be the seven cereal boxes. So we have seven cereal boxes. And what we're doing is we're sharing these seven cereal boxes with 10 boys, 10 people. If we put 10 inside, then we're saying that one person gets 10. No, that's one boy, two boys, three boys, four boys, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We don't know how many cereal boxes each one gets. However, each person is going to get the same amount. Now, our dividend, our total is on top. And in our division problem, our dividend or total goes first. And we're dividing by 10 people. The first number is our numerator. The second number will be our denominator. Our numerator is our top number. Our denominator is the bottom number. Now let's think about it. Our numerator is smaller than our denominator, so the answer is less than 1, so we don't have to put it into the house. We only need to put it inside the house if the numerator is larger than the denominator because it means it's more than 1. Think about it. If we have 7 zero boxes and we're sharing with 10 people, no one's going to get a whole box because there's only seven and there's ten people that we're sharing it with. So our number will be less than one. Now, is there a number that could go into both seven and ten to reduce it? Well, the factors of seven are one and seven, and the factors of ten are one, two, and five, and ten. So no, there's no number that can be into both of them. So our final answer is seven-tenths of a zero box. Keep in mind that unlike the other problem, we didn't have to put inside the house because the numerator is not bigger than the denominator. And there's no numbers to reduce. Our factors of 7 are 1 and 7. The factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. Nothing overlaps, so there's no dividing by top and bottom. All right. Good luck. And keep in mind, as you start number 3, just bring your paper down. Hide it, hide it, hide it, and try to solve it without peeking. So the number is 4, 5, 6, 7, and so forth. Hide it, hide it, hide it, solve it. Good luck. Have fun.